What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to test out the performance of the all new Raspberry Pi 3A Plus versus the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. So I went ahead and ran some benchmarks on each of these boards. I am using Raspbian. I have not overclocked whatsoever. There is no extra cooling on these boards. These are completely stock straight out of the box. So if you're not familiar with the new Pi 3A Plus, it's pretty much a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, just slimmed down and shortened a little bit. As you can see, we only have a single USB 2.0 port here, no ethernet, and another sacrifice they made was only adding 512 megabytes of RAM instead of one gigabyte. The CPU is exactly the same. We still have the Broadcom BCM2837B0. It's a Cortex A53 64-bit quad-core at 1.4 gigahertz. They left us with that 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. I actually like using this little thing. It's a lot smaller than the original Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and it's going to be great for slimmer projects. But I've had a lot of people ask me, have they sacrificed performance in any way? Well, technically, off the bat, we only have 512 megabytes of RAM, so that will hinder some applications running or multiple applications at the same time. But overall, CPU performance should remain the same. It actually took me a long time to get all these tests compiled, I have made some charts up. Now I'm running the exact same SD card in each of these with the same operating system. I just swapped it out after I was done. Between each CPU test, I gave it a two minute cooldown period. The Pi's in the same exact place and I'm using the same exact 2.5 amp, five volt power supply. I ran each one of these tests three times each and I just took the highest out of those benchmarks and placed it into the chart. First up, I ran a simple Wi-Fi speed download test. Now I'm on my home network using five gigahertz Wi-Fi on each of these Pis. My home network max speed is 400 megabits down. There will be a little margin of error here, but they're pretty much exactly the same speed. Upload speed, pretty much the same thing. Like I mentioned, I ran each one of these tests three times and the 3B plus actually was scoring a lot lower until that third time around where I had 23. So these are basically right there with each other. Moving on to some CPU benchmarks. This is Sysbench calculating 5,000 prime numbers. Sysbench again, multi-thread with 4,000 yields and five locks. Multi-threaded, max prime up to 20,000. I wanted to run a little longer one just to see if one of them thermal throttled a little earlier and it looks like they're exactly the same speed here. So CPU performance will be the same on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 3A+. RAM speed was something I was a little worried about when I first picked up the 3A+. They are using a different chip because it's 512 megs. They're really close, but every time I ran this test, and I actually ran it five times just to be sure, the Pi 3B Plus did come ahead by just a little bit each time. I figured I'd go ahead and test the SD card speed. Now all I did was take the SD card out of one of them and pop it in the other so it's the exact same one. And it's actually only an HC class 4 32 gigabyte PNY card. So if you're using a faster card, you will get better speeds than this. While I was here, I figured I'd look at OpenGL performance. This is texture mapping. Now these are demos, they're not really benchmarks, but it'll give you an idea. It's a little hard to compare because the FPS bounces around so much. You might see the 3B plus go a little higher, but then you'll see the 3A plus go higher than the B. I also tested both boards with the experimental OpenGL driver enabled. This is just a little gears demo from GX Lab. I knew right off the bat that both of these boards were gonna pretty much benchmark and perform exactly the same. They have the same CPU, the same video core GPU, only difference is the amount of RAM here and form factor. We lost a few ports on the A+, but it's great for small projects. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I wanted to get this out of the way because there was a little confusion when the 3A+, was announced and released. People thought it might be an upgrade over the 3B+, and as you can see, in raw performance, they are pretty much exactly the same. So if you're getting a Pi just to run a Linux desktop like Raspbian, I would definitely recommend the 3B+. You'll be able to open up more tabs in Chrome. You can have a video plan while you're doing some text editing without having to worry about the RAM. If you're going for a headless setup that does not require Ethernet, the 3A+, is a great option. This is going to be really good for little tiny projects, maybe even some handheld retro gaming stuff, robotics, some wireless signage. There are literally thousands of things that you can do with this new Raspberry Pi 3A+, that you could have done with the B+. But now we have a smaller form factor out of the box, 
and it's a bit cheaper. As for RetroPie, I've done a lot of testing and I really haven't noticed a big difference between the two. But then again, I don't run a track mode, I don't have a bunch of fancy themes installed and things like that. So it works really well on the 3A+. But in the end, it really comes down to what project you want to run on one of these Pies and how much you want to spend. If you're looking into getting either one of these Raspberry Pies, I'm going to leave Amazon links in the description. If there's anything you want to see running on the new 3A+, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.